You see, the way I love my wife best is by never letting her be first. The way I love my kids best, I have four kids, I have have four grandkids. The way I love them best is by never letting them be first. The moment they become first, I love them less. The more I prioritize my relationship with God and love him first, the more I'm going to love them best. Being on mission with Jesus, and that's what we're really talking about. Loving God and living for his purpose is what life is all about. Say it with me. Loving God and living his, is what life is all about. Loving God and living for his purpose is what life is all about. You may be hearing you say, I'm just trying to discover what my life purpose is. This is it, that we would join in with Jesus, that we would love God and we would live uh, for his purpose. Jesus said, I came to seek and save the lost. What's interesting about that is we look around our culture and we grumble and complain sometimes. But we've got to get engaged in this. We can do this. We can change our world. The reality is that another statistic is right now, 80% of those people in the United States who are not Christians say that they would gladly engage with a Christian about their faith conversation. And yet, unfortunately, only 19% of those of us who are Christians say we're willing to talk about our faith. And that becomes the problem. We wonder, why, why do we get to where we're at? We as a church, we can step up. We can do this. You can do this. If you're a follower of Jesus, you want to do this. But sometimes fear holds us back. As we look at the life of Zacchaeus and this interaction with Jesus, we can take some lessons, some pages from his life to really live this out because loving God and living for his purpose is what life is all about. Say it with me again. Loving God and living for his purpose is what life is all about. What has to happen in my life is to say, okay, God, I believe this. I need you to transform me. When I'm getting distracted, transform me to love you first and to live for your purpose. And to realize that's what my life is all about. That's why I wake up in the morning. That's why you've given me uh, another day. See, unfortunately, Jesus, when he's talking to the church, and we have to be careful this doesn't become us. He said this in Revelation. He said, I have this complaint against you. Go back and read this chapter because Jesus is complimenting the church up to this point. He says, man, you guys do all kinds of great works. You're doing good things. Translating into our, even in our world, he's doing good things in the community, doing all these great things, but I have this one complaint against you. I don't know about you, but I don't even like that sentence. I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. God, take us back. Take us back to our first love. Those who first become Christians, man, we're, we're out there then. We're like, yes, I'm, everybody needs to know this. And what happens is we just get distracted with the things of life. We, we, something else comes up and we kind of start cruising. We get rejected once by sharing our faith and we kind of forget about it. And Jesus says, but this is what I hold against you. This is my complaint against you. First love. I want to be a first love Christian. I want us to continue being a first love church. Let's be those first love Christians. Let's those go back to what it means to follow Jesus and how he's transformed our lives because loving God and living for his purpose is what life is all about. Say it with me again. Loving God and living for his purpose is what life is all about. Let's take a page from Zacchaeus and in this moment, how do I keep living in that first love? Well, Zacchaeus, one of the things we see here is that he prioritizes his relationship with God above all else. We're going to have to do that. And, and sometimes what happens is even as followers of Jesus, life begins to happen. Uh, you know, somebody in your family is in a crisis. And you think that's the number one priority in my life, and it can't be. You see, the way I love my wife best is by never letting her be first. The way I love my kids best, I have four kids, I have, five, I have four grandkids. The way I love them best is by never letting them be first. The moment they become first, I love them less. The more I prioritize my relationship with God to love him first, the more I'm going to love them best. And I wanna be a great husband. I wanna be a, a great dad, a great granddad. 
Well, I don't, great granddad. That sounds old, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, a very good granddad. <laughs> I guess I want to be a great granddad. I don't want to believe that old. I'm going to heaven. Y'all let me die. You know what I'm saying? Prioritize your relationship with God above else. Look at, look at this in Zacchaeus. He, he tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was a wee little man and a wee little man was he. You forgot the song already? Let me annoy you with that. Yeah, he was short. He was too short to see over the crowd. And so he's like, I'm passionate about this. I'm going to go after him. So he ran ahead. This, this reminds me of, uh, you know, we've got a golf tournament coming up here in town. I've been to it several times. And uh, when, when, if you go to a golf tournament, it's like, man, I had this one super golfer that I want to follow. And then I get there. I think I'm going to get up there and watch them all the time. Then I realize everybody wants to follow the same guy I'm following. And you can't get up the crowd, and then you see people, they just lose all dignity, and they run ahead to get to the next green to see them. And that's what I think of Zacchaeus. That's what I see going on here. He's like, he wants to see Jesus, but the crowd's all around him. He can't see him, and he's like, forget all dignity. I mean, he forget his position, his wealth. He's running ahead of the crowd, climbing a tree, no matter what people think, because he wants to get a glimpse of Jesus. It's prioritizing, saying, God, I, I want you more than anything. I'm gonna pursue you. And Jesus said this in Matthew 22. He said, you must love the Lord your God with what? All your heart, soul, and mind. You know, the New Testament is written primarily in Greek. You know what the Greek word for all is? Oh, yeah, you cannot expand on that. It means everything. Love him with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Giving it all to him, and if I'm gonna love those around me best... I have to pursue him first. Maybe it's a moment where I say, God, where am I in this narrative? Am I really pursuing you? Am I, am I in the crowd? Have I just gotten kind of used to Christianity? I'm grumbling, I'm complaining. And by the way, the grumblers and the complainers, they're usually the ones least involved in their Christian life. Or am I living Jesus like you did? Uh, that I am all into loving the Father and living for his purpose. Jesus said, I came to seek and to save the lost. That's what it's all about. Loving God and living for his purpose is what life is all about. Second, if we're taking page from Zacchaeus, is listen for his voice, God's voice, in everything you do. Listen for his voice in what? Everything you do. I mean, Zacchaeus as he's trying to get a glimpse at Jesus, Jesus already knows him, his name. He hasn't met him, but he's, he knows him. Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus, and he called him by name. He knows us. Those of you who are not yet followers of Jesus, he knows you. He's pursuing you. You're not here by accident. Follower of Jesus, he knows you. He cares about the details of your life. This picture of intimacy that he knows us and loves us is true in our lives no matter where we're at. And then we see the interaction go on. Jesus says, quick, come down. I must be a guest at your home today. Now the crowd grumbles and they complain. Zacchaeus, though, he quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. Man, he's responding to Jesus immediately. This is a notorious sinner. And he responds to Jesus quickly and with excitement and joy. Christian, know this. Delayed obedience is disobedience. There may be something in your life that God's leading you to. Sharing your faith with someone. Praying for someone. A step of obedience in the things that we talk about from Scripture week after week. And you go, oh, not now, not now, not now. And what happens is we become just like the 10%, the 4%. We say no to Jesus in that area of our life long enough, and pretty soon we get over it. We're hard-hearted about it. It's not like you're going to miss out on heaven because of that. You're going to miss out on the excitement and the joy he has for you, the purpose he has for your life here. And then we become the frustrated, grumbling crowd. You guys are not that. And your passion is that we as a church, we're on mission to lead people to Jesus, to train people to follow Jesus, to send others to lead for Jesus. I love 
pastoring a group of people who are passionate about that. Let's stir that passion up. Let's ignite that even more. Listen to me, Christian. Disciples make disciples. That's the earmark. Jesus said that you will obey my commands. And the command he's given us is to go and make disciples, to listen and obey him. In John 10, Jesus said, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. We listen and we follow. Listen and follow. Lord, who are you leading me to share my faith with? Who are you opening the door for me to transform by you speaking through me, even as Clayton was saying. It's not about going to some class and learning some words. It's the Holy Spirit gives you those words in the moment. Saying, God, show me, just help me, open those doors, and God will do that. Because loving God and living for his purpose is what life is all about. He already has the appointments for us. That you're gonna wake up tomorrow, or even throughout the rest of this day, and say, Lord, who is it you want me to share my faith with today? just getting people one step closer to Jesus.